Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. And when you think of the Royal Society, you probably think of one man. Me? Keith Moore, yeah, Keith yeah. Moore, head librarian, superstar. But just below him, Isaac Newton. And we've shown you so much Isaac Newton stuff on objectivity. Here's a reminder, we've got busts, paintings, books, manuscripts, look at all that stuff. But we've got more. Now there's a few things here we've already seen mm. before. We won't get those out again, but what's the new stuff? Well, let's start here. This is the new old stuff. It's actually quite a famous bust of Newton by a guy called David Lamarchant. I should say that the original of this bust isn't in our collections, it's elsewhere. The original is in ivory. So I'm, I'm slightly pleased that we don't have it. It would have been carved from a whole elephant tusk, probably. But they made many, many copies of it over the years. This is probably a 19th century one, we think. But it still bears all the same features of Newton you probably be able to see the inscription on the back. So we've got Le Marchand there as the, the sculptor, Isaac Newton, the year there, which is 1718. That's when he carved the original one in, in ivory and a Latin inscription there, Eque Ora. Do you think that looks like him? That looks a bit different to a lot of the... It's a lifetime one and slightly jowly, quite, quite a little bit different from maybe you'd think of Newton. And he's not wearing the wig, of course, so he's bareheaded in this one. So hopefully a, 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 an accurate likeness. So I mentioned that wasn't ivory as the original was. This is a, an original and it is ivory. Okay. So this time by uh, an artist called van der Hagen, who is known again for, for working in ivory. This one, slightly more full face, lots and lots of detail in there. This is quite a beautiful one, I think. Do you think that's beautiful? I yeah. think it's kind of grotesque. Yeah. A bit horrible, like, like mm -hmm. not in a, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, but again, you know, I think quite often the artists in, in portraits and oil paintings slightly idealised their subjects. These ones slightly less so. So Keith, what do we think about the fact this is ivory? Well, these days, of course, ivory is, is controlled. You, you can't make things out of it. There are export bans on, on this kind of material. And it's problematic because ivory quite often was associated with the slave trade in the uh, 17th and 18th century. So when you have objects like this, you also have to just think about where the materials came from and the history of that, as well as the subjects uh, shown in this kind of carving. Into the 19th century, you get more and more objects associated with Newton and they, they become, I guess, a little bit formulaic. You do get profile portraits. And we've got an example of one of those here where very often you'll see Newton in this kind of pose and uh, the inevitable comet in the background here. It's a kind of standard representation of the great man. It looks like a bar of soap. It does rather, just it? Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I turn it over, this is actually very hard to read, but you might just be able to make out there Travertini Clermont Ferrand, 1885. So this is uh, a Victorian one, made in France, uh, in a region famous for its stone. So this is French. It's made long after Newton died. Mm. So it's like, this is like, tourist tat basically is it? It's a collectible thing. People were still uh, enthusiastic about Isaac Newton and still producing these things and presumably they were still selling. At what point does the Royal Society say all right when we've got enough of this stuff in the collection? Well we do have the objectivity Isaac Newton signature t-shirt Brady as you will know. Uh, still available. So still link, available. It, yeah, yeah. link in the description. <laughs> link in the description. <laughs> However, if uh, an important portrait or object came up, that's when we might step in if it was something historical that we see, thought would uh, match things in the collection. If I gave you one of those t-shirts, would you put it in the collection? Yeah. You mean we don't have one already? I don't know. Oh, of course we had to pay I've for never it. seen you wear one. <laughs> This is a Wedgwood one. So the Wedgwood factory, and Josiah Wedgwood was a fellow of the Royal Society, was making these kinds of ceramic plaques from the 18th century onwards. Again, very similar to the one we've just seen. Here's Newton in profile again, and uh, you have the comet in the background. And they were making these things until relatively recently, I think. That's the exact same one, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty close. So these kinds of images are reproduced and copied and, and come out again and again and again. <laughs> Okay. We don't know too much about this one. This is rather different, so you can see he's facing the other way. You might also just be able to see, it's very difficult to see, but in the tippy corner there, you can probably just see the comet again, the other way around mm -hmm. as well. But this one is uh, interesting because it not only has a representation of Newton, but 
It has a lock of his hair in there as well, which you might just be able to see in the bottom of the plaque. Is that really his hair? As far as we know it is. If I turn it over, you'll see some information on the back of it. Presented by Mrs. Newton Butler, February 1922. A very rare medallion of Sir Isaac Newton and lock of his hair. It's possible. Well, anything's possible. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. Be good, be good to know definitively, wouldn't it? If you had to bet your house, and remember, if it is his hair... I like my house. <laughs> would you, what would you bet if you had to bet your house that it is mm. or isn't? I, I, I'd bet it wasn't. I think the smart money would be on that. You're sceptical. I'm sceptical. That's I, good. I work in the Royal Society. How could I be anything else? Take no one's word for it. Indeed. OK. I'm going to go out there and say that is his hair. Because I want to be able to say I held a lock of his hair. But it's kind of grey coloured. Well, that's OK. I mean, some of us have grey hair, Brady. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Possibly a, a lock of Sir Isaac Newton's hair. Not the first time we've featured a lock of his hair. Just to remind you, yeah. we've shown you this before, but just have a look. This is another alleged sample of Sir Isaac Newton's hair. We could do a comparison. You could get a strand of each and send them for DNA analysis. Yeah, it's been done. A team of German researchers did it. They analysed quite a few samples of Newton's hair. Mm. I've forgotten how many different individuals they came from, but no. it, was, it was quite a few. <laughs> but if these two came from the same individual, like, that would, that would say something. That would help, yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you do it? Let's do it. Do it? Yeah. You're not going to do it. We are. I can tell you're not going to do it. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> And we have another object here. Yeah, it's also thought to have been Isaac Newton's, and it is definitely an instrument from the same period. It has been done by an English engraver who made this beautiful equinoctial ring dial. Equinoctial ring dial. This ring goes like this. Ah. And if you hold it up higher, underneath it gives the 12 hours yep. on both sides. So you should be able to read the time at any latitude in the world, because you can change the sides of it and you can change the latitude and the month and then you should be able to read the time by looking at the sun. 